Where there is an alliance, betrayal is usually not far away. And naturally, the more treasure is on the line, the more likely it is that somebody is going to get greedy. Today's story is an unfortunate tale because this, my friends, is not your average alliance backstab. This betrayal occurred on community day of season 8, after 9 hours of grinding out and stacking loot. The amount of treasure I lost was frankly immense, but nothing hurt more than being double-crossed by people whom you trust. We shared not only the trials and tribulations of our task at hand, but also the joys of camaraderie that made this ultimate betrayal so much more painful. But I am getting ahead of myself. Only because I didn't get paid in the game doesn't mean I can't get paid in real life, introducing our new sponsor for today, Gamer Advantage. Now you might be wondering how the heck a pair of blue light blocking glasses could possibly give you an advantage as a gamer, and the answer is simple, sleep. A good night's sleep is the key to performing your best whether you are gaming or doing literally anything else. And if you're like me and you spend a lot of time in front of your PC, chances are you're exposing yourself to blue light for extended periods of time. To put it simply, blue light basically tells your body that you should be staying awake. I took it upon myself to order a pair of GA glasses out of pocket to give them a try before accepting the sponsorship, and just a few days in, I could already feel the difference. Blocking the blue light allows my body to produce melatonin as it is supposed to, which made me sleepy at night and contributed to me falling asleep faster. And that all the while, the glasses are very stylish, extremely robust to ridiculous lengths, and so comfortable and lightweight that even with my headphones on, I can barely tell I'm wearing them. You can get them in prescription and non-prescription versions, the color distortion is absolutely minimal, and the proprietary lens technology is clinically proven to improve your sleep. So what are you waiting? For. Save 10% on your next pair of Gamer Advantage glasses by clicking the link in the description below and using promo code CLIFF. Thanks a bunch to Gamer Advantage for sponsoring today's video and now, onto our standard programming. If you've ever participated in a community day, you'll know that things don't always work as intended. With a massive multiplier that increased the value of loot as the day went on, thousands of pirates across the globe set sail to make as much gold as humanly possible. And I was no exception. As per usual, my plan was to start off the day with a commodity run, seeing as how that is basically free money. But unfortunately for me, the merchant did not want to let go of her cargo. I don't think that's gonna work today, chat. That created a lot of problems, like for example having to find a supply crate on a random island because I couldn't buy anything from any of the NPCs in the game. With a commodity run out of the question, I was stumped as to how I should go about making gold that day, all my lonesome no less, but thankfully I was not gonna be alone for long. Good day, gentlemen! Hello, can you hear me? I can. Hey, there you are. What's good? Uh, I'm, I'm behind you. Are you guys yeah. done or is this just like an intermittent stop? Oh, no, I'm on my own, dude. <laughs> oh, you're on your <laughs> own? Oh. Yeah, come, come, come. I didn't know it at the time, but this was the beginning of something big. For this individual and I would lay the foundation for what would become a server-wide money printing machine. For the time being, and because I didn't have any better plans, I offered to help him out manning the brigantine until the rest of his crew showed up. Of course, an alliance would be necessary so that I could be revived should I find my untimely demise whilst part of their crew. And because I had absolutely zero faith in my ship surviving without me on board, I decided to bring all of my supplies over to them. Well, I say I had zero faith, but I did end up going through the trouble of hiding it behind a rock in hopes of leveling up my emissary flag whilst away from it. Once I had returned on the back of my rowboat, my new captain and I had a conversation about a galleon he saw a little ways away, during which one of his crewmates finally showed up, albeit with a bit of a broken microphone. I took a little bathroom break before we headed out on our first adventure and just enjoy him trying to entertain the voices in my head. Yeah, so about those audio bugs in the game. We decided to head out in the middle of the night because it appeared as though the galleon my captain spotted earlier was on the final stretch of a Legend of the Veil vale voyage. Now, because supplies were so difficult to come by thanks to our inability to purchase any from the NPCs, my captain decided to hop off on an island to fill his pockets. But while he was gone, I realized that it was not the galleon that was doing the veil. Now, you might want to relate to your friend that the sloop is doing it. The galleon doesn't have anything to do with the, um, with the veil. There's a sloop on it right now. Alright. I'm glad at least the game could understand what he was saying. Alas, with our target being a vessel smaller than our own, we began adjusting our plans of attack. My captain was unsure whether we should go in full force or if negotiations would be in order. And I mean, you guys know me. Of course I tried to do what I do best, and that certainly was not fighting. And we can play it friendly if you want, maybe we can recruit them. Ooh. 
It's up to you. Like, if you want to do it, I'm down. I mean, here's the thing. We think long term versus short term profits, right? If they keep grinding, that's more money for us in the long term. All right, okay. Establish problems then. I would lie if I said that this is the first time I decided to recruit a fleet on community day. But what can I say? If there is ever an occasion where pirates can be persuaded to cooperate, it is during a time of insane gold multipliers. And with that, we had recruited our first ally. Now, because these guys were determined to fly under the flag of Athena's fortune, my captain made the executive order for us to switch our allegiance as well. It was then that I realized I had hidden my ship away before raising any emissary in the first place, so I requested to meet back up with them once I had rectified that mistake. Fortunately, I successfully raised the flag just in time for them to sell their loot, but unfortunately, it didn't seem like anybody was keen on picking me back up. And by the time I caught up with them, plans had changed yet again. We think we're gonna go to the bar. I think that's the plan. Okay, should um, we... And then the... Go ahead. No, you go ahead. <laughs> I was just, I was very confused because I thought they were gonna do veils, but now they're Reaper. No, so they wanted to do veils, but then now they want to stack forward them since it's all boat. We have a ritual spell, so we can go do that now. Yeah, you know what? But, let's um, let's do that. Uh, you guys go to the Fav so it doesn't despawn. I'll grab Tridents and I'll meet you at the Fav. Sounds good. Alright, I'll see you there. As you can see, successful cooperation is often full of compromises. Not that I was against the idea of stacking Ford of the Damned Loot, it is by far the most reliable way to make money on events like this. But there were a couple stipulations that we will get into shortly. For the time being, I was on my mermy way to a mermaid treasury in order to stock up on tridents, when much to my dismay I was visited by a skelly ship. Getting struck by a peace ball was annoying enough as is, but um, you guys remember when I gave all of my supplies to the brigantine at the start of our session? I hope you do, because I definitely did not! The 10 cannonballs in my pocket would have to be enough because there was no universe in which I could finish the job by using fireworks. But if there's one thing I'm not, it's a quitter. One does not technically need cannonballs to sink a ship, all it takes is water. And I'm sure some of you guys wouldn't believe me if I didn't bring video evidence, but well... Are you ready for this gaming prowess? Easiest sink of my life chat room. Yep, I sank a skelly ship with my bucket. And that was just as well because every skeleton ship has a chance of dropping an item we would need if stacking FOTD was our goal. A ritual skull. Which did not drop from this particular vessel, but we'll just put a pin on that one for now. My alliance was awaiting the delivery of tridents and I'd be remiss to be the only cog wheel on this machine that does not do its job. Funnily enough, even more cogs were added to said machine whilst I was doing that. So I collected my Disney sticks, sailed towards their far far fortune, made a small detour to change my emissary flag and arrived just in time to deliver their goods. I know I keep saying this whenever it does happen, but seeing so many pirates work together in unison is quite the sight to behold. There was so much trust in this alliance, in fact, that my captain allowed me to take a few hundred cannonballs out of their ship so I can go back to hunting skellies in order to get more skulls of the ritual variety. All right, fellas, I get the supplies. I'm gonna go find the skulls. Hey, good luck, Conjure Adventure. Sir. Good luck to you guys as well. May our pockets be full by the end of this day. Yeah. Yeah. Little did I know at the time that somebody's pockets were definitely going to be full, just that it most assuredly was not going to be mine. But if you thought it was going to be smooth sailing for the next seven hours until that betrayal happens, then well, you're in for a surprise. This is going to be a long one, fella, so I hope that you got your snacks at the ready, because this story is far from over. It was skelly hunting time. With us not being able to purchase skull stash of voyages from Lorena, our best source of ritual skulls was hunting down AI vessels. Giving them respect was definitely not part of my schedule, so I aggressively rammed into them to take a look at the loot they have lying around. While there was no ritual skull on board yet, I decided to sink them anyway because there was a chance for it to spawn once they're defeated. But unfortunately, no luck yet. If the skelly sloop did not have any, maybe this galleon would fare better, though it seemed like Rare was determined to not give me any ritual skulls that day, putting our farming agenda at risk. Not to mention my own well being big fan of rare giving skelly ships access to cursed cannibals by the way no you know what we need to talk about this there are few things in sea of Thieves that provoke visceral gamer reactions like what i'm about to show you not being able to purchase any supplies whatever putting myself at risk of being betrayed by my alliance part of the contract but this this needs to just not be in the game please stop bro please i was kidding please Nothing like helplessly watching your ship sink because Rare decided AI needs to have crowd control. Though to be fair, the voices did try to warn me. Too risky for a sloop? No, we will do it. What's the worst that could happen, Jack? 
<laughs> yeah, I can't not find that funny. Not that this is how I felt at the time, but in retrospect, I definitely question my choice of trying to swim what remained of my supplies to the next island. At the end, I had no choice but to start over, but what felt even worse than that was having to go back to my alliance empty-handed. So I definitely pocketed a few more Disney sticks just to make sure I have something to show for myself. But when I arrived at the fort, I found out that I was not the only one having a bad time. Hey, what's up? Yeah, the Vrink uh, betrayed us, by the way. A what? That was definitely news to me. A betrayal? So early into the video? I wish I had realized that this was a sign for things to come. The culprit in question had gotten away with little more than a chest of legends, which, looking back at it, yeah, I did see a suspicious Athena cell pop up while I made my way over here. For now, we cleared out the vault and distributed the loot among the remaining vessels. The Reaper chests would have to be buried for now, because apparently a server cannot hold more than two of these at a time, so by burying them, you make sure you get a new pair in the vault when killing the fort again. I just always did it so people don't see on the map that we're stacking FOTD. As much as you'd assume that this betrayal had weakened our alliance, in actuality, it made our bond grow stronger. We agreed that our flagship gets to keep all the treasure belonging to Athena's fortune, I would get to keep all the Reaper chests once we are done, and the other sloop gets all the remaining treasure that does not correspond to either of these factions. Having sorted out the loot allocation ensured that nobody would feel like they got the short end of the stick, and ultimately, we all bargained for the things we most wanted anyway. The only greedy crew on the server was the betraying brigantine, who, much to our surprise, decided to come back. Are they close? Yeah, they're pretty close. We can six man break, so. Alright, I'm coming over. I'm here, I'm here. Right, they're currently in front of us. Okay. I got helm. Alright, back to our raise, boys, back to our raise. Going over. about speedrunning a fight, these guys were not prepared for the combined might of our entire alliance to come crashing down on them, and ultimately, this had further contributed to strengthening our bond. Doesn't hurt that I got my hands on some supply crates to replace the resources I lost. Now, this was obviously not the last we had seen of that brigantine. No matter how often we'd sink them, they could keep coming back, so instead of dealing with that headache, my captain decided to hear them out. Apparently, stealing the Athena chest was a rogue action from just one of their crew members, but that definitely was not an excuse good enough to be forgiven. My captain told them that they can stay in the alliance to get their 50% cut when we sell our loot as long as they stay away from the Fort of the Damned, since they could no longer be trusted. And once that was sorted out, we could go back to stacking loot. Though since we were on our last ritual skull... Yo, boys, uh, I see another Skelly Galleon. If somebody wants to come with me so we can take that down for another skull, potentially. Dude doesn't want to sink again. Man. Listen, I just... If I die, I don't want to die alone, all right? I'll come with. All right, let's go. Now it will come to absolutely nobody's surprise that with me having a second person on my ship, taking down that Skelly Galleon was absolutely no trouble. And boy did I feel vindicated after that one. Even better than that was the fact that this time we actually got our hands on a ritual skull, meaning the farming of loot could commence. I also enjoyed getting to know another member of this alliance a bit better. All the dudes I got to hang out with so far were incredibly chill, which definitely made the tedium of this grind a lot more bearable. Even when things didn't always go as planned. When we began distributing the treasure from this run, our designated Athena ship made a request for the mermaid gems because they were still grinding out Hunter's Core 50. And let me tell you, as somebody who just recently finished that grind, I was more than happy to say yes. Another certified bro move and a long line of bro moves that made us grow ever closer. I need someone to hop on real quick for the uh, okay, so, skelly ship. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's so cursed, oh my god. We were in high spirits, another Skelly Galleon would find its demise to fuel our operation, but ultimately, our luck had finally run out. After another ship had joined the Alliance, our fleet dispersed in order to find more ritual skulls, and with the maximum multiplier soon being activated, we were keen to stack even more loot. But if you thought that the NPCs had finally fixed themselves several hours into the event, you'd be wrong. My next best chance was taking on a regular skull fort in hopes of that holding another funny red skull in its vault. Needless to say that now was a great time for the game to try and screw me over again since now I was once again alone on my ship. Oh come on, come on why? I don't have cannibal. Chat, why is there loot in the water? That's another skelly ship worth of loot. 
It's your ritual skull. Did I say screw me over? I meant finally helping me out. I take any excuse not to have to actually clear the skelly fort. So after taking a peek into the vault from up above without any ritual skulls in sight, I decided to bail. When we reconvened at the FOTD of the Damned, we had gotten our hands on a total of three ritual skulls. So after burying the Reaper chest once more, we were ready to boot up the grinder again. And let's just say that our prolonged exposure to mind-numbing PvE activities definitely had an effect on our performance. This was the absolutely worst time for another ship to approach us, but much to my surprise, they weren't here to fight. Despite their PvP curse pointing to the contrary, it appeared as though this was just another like-minded pirate who wanted a piece of the community day pie. Betrayal joined the party. Oh, how trusting I was. Since one of our sloops had since logged off, we extended their share of the loot to this new fella, and I even gave him my own spoils as a sign of good faith and to level up his emissary flag to rank 5, which everybody in the Alliance seemed to be absolutely okay with. I've never had this many boats to just one area. I actually. love this. Dude, it's just such a rare occasion that seeing it is just amazing. I love it. It, was, it wasn't even difficult to like set up. <laughs> it happened so quickly. <laughs> I mean, hey, listen, all it takes is one day with an insane multiplier and suddenly everybody agrees. <laughs> it's just like, yep. yep, we want to make lots of money today. Yep. All right, I got pink. Let's I got white. This. Despite the passing of hours clearly chomping away at our energy levels, we were determined to keep going. Sure, we did end up making more and more mistakes, which means our speed run clears of sub 10 minutes were a thing of the past. But what we lost in efficiency, we more than made up for in good vibes. Naturally, we could only stack FOTD as many times as we had ritual skulls to spare, and with us having run out, it was time to set sail and get some new ones. My captain had put another pirate on my ship and set me, along with the other sloop, to take care of the skull fort in hopes of that spawning one such item after all. And somewhere along the way, the other sloop had found itself with a second player of their own. I didn't really think twice about it at the time, but in hindsight, I should have definitely seen how suspicious that was. No, you wash. I was pretty much stunning this. Shut up. Wash. It appeared as though there was some kind of history between these players. Funny as it was that they kept TDMing each other, I was kind of running on fumes at that point, and whilst they were busy fooling around, nobody was clearing the fort. Even when I announced that Ghosty Boy and I would go and search for some skelly ships, the other two from what would become the traitor sloop hopped on to continue their team deathmatch. Once we finally got them off our ship, we could take on another skelly galleon just in time for my second in command to have to go AFK. I was definitely reliving some kind of war flashback when I was faced with a bronze outside of a ship bigger than my own, but in a surprising twist of fate, somebody came to the rescue. It was, in fact, the brigantine that had initially betrayed our alliance. Hey, brigantine to the rescue, let's go! You can have it, it's fine. I'll just take the ritual skull, you guys can have the rest. I was definitely happy to see that these guys turned a new leaf. They had every chance to take me out whilst alone and isolated from the rest of my alliance. But alas, it seemed like they were telling the truth about the traitor having been a rogue. Not that I would know anything about that. Yes, my friends, we are finally approaching the one fateful moment that changed the whole course of my community day. But let me preface it with the following. If you guys come across any of these players, please do not show them any unnecessary hostility. I don't need any of you white knighting for me only because I'm a content creator. Ultimately, betrayal is part of this game, as much as cooperation is, and while the means by which I was betrayed are a little cringeworthy, I don't want hate to be sent towards anyone. I mean, realistically, how mad could I be about this if I make a video about it, right? TLDR, if I find out you're sending these people hate, I'm gonna permaban you on all of my socials, including the comment section. Now, for the grande finale. More and more signs were piling up that even I, in my delirious, exhausted state, could no longer ignore. Um, Gotta give him credit for having a lot of energy. Lord Bayon! <laughs> I love this guy. He's just never had a thought in his life. <laughs> The complaints about our local TDM connoisseur were piling up, not only from members of my alliance, but also from the voices in my head. That's my Twitch chat, by the way. And things got extremely suspicious when suddenly our high energy friend over here began calling out individual chatters in my chat room. You know what that means, right? I don't think I need to spell this out for you, but yes, if anything was to go wrong, it was reasonable to assume that a certain crew would have external information on my every move. Tensions began to rise when it was time to distribute the loot. I was definitely not feeling great about them using my ship as a TDM arena in light of the fact that I knew they were part of the voices. And this was also a horrible time for me to find out that somebody had siphoned every single one of my cannonballs. Alas, I truly wanted to give them the benefit of the doubts, so we continued for one final round of the FOTD of the Damned using the 
last ritual skull. We were now 9 hours into this grind, but even with me running on fumes, I could still pull off gamer moves like this one. I'm gaming. That's what getting your requisite amount of sleep helps you achieve, and with the final strike of my trident, Grey Marrow was defeated a final time. As per our agreement, I was allowed to take every single Reaper chest onto my vessel, which, funnily enough, made it even more valuable of a target than our flagship holding almost a dozen Athena chests. And what I didn't want to believe would happen, did inevitably happen. This loop initiated their betrayal. At first I thought this was a joke, but with every cannibal that struck my hole, I realized that this was no laughing matter, despite the one being responsible for that not being the one I anticipated. I'm not harmed, I'm just, I'm just stuck behind the map table. I am Switzerland in this situation, I am, I am not touching on anything. Clear, 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 let's not do all that, clear, let's not do all that. Okay, that's fine. Good. That's funny. That's funny. I, I agree with this. It was apparent that I would not be granted a fair fight. Without any cannibals on my ship and a seasoned TDMer ready to jump me the moment I fight back, I was in a tight spot. Weirdly enough, said TDMer was actually kind of cheering me on as I was making an attempt to take out his friend using gunfire rather than cannon fire. The whole thing didn't make any sense. Previously, we stuffed six men on a brigantine in order to take out a traitor, but for some reason, nobody was coming to stop this. In fact, I was being held at gunpoint to continue this fight, albeit with a lot of handicaps. After 9 hours of stacking, I was definitely not just gonna take this lying down, and as such, I continued to try my darndest to send the skelly man back to the ferry man. Some members of my alliance eventually caught on to what was happening, and while I was getting a helping hand on my ship, nobody was firing at the traitor. I don't know if this was some kind of elaborate ploy to troll me, or if that guy had stolen cannibals from every single one of us, but this continued to just feel extremely odd. Sometimes they were fighting each other, sometimes they weren't, and the only one even talking Talking to me was the TDMer. Not that I could say much of anything because I knew every word I said was being listened to. At some point, I had peeled off every single pirate with a pink name tag and invited Brandon onto my ship, but realistically, there was nothing we could do. One cheeky drive by sale of a Reaper's bounty was giving us a taste for how much gold was actually on the line. But with us being unable to identify friend or foe, with us knowing they were listening to our conversations and seeing everything I do from my perspective, the fight was lost, even without them ever actually killing me. Oh, now they're in the stream asking me how the stream's like. I have no idea. Oh, wow. um, are you listening to yourself, man? Maidenless behavior, bro. I didn't know if they actually wanted to loot on my ship or if the entire goal was just getting a reaction out of me. I mean, including the balloon to gold conversion, I'm pretty sure we had well over a million gold worth of loot on board. But after nine and a half hours with all of my cannonballs gone and them clearly still watching the stream, I had lost my will to fight. So in a depressing end to this adventure, Brandon and I decided to donate every single reaper chest on our ship to the brigantine who first betrayed our alliance many hours ago. It is an unfortunate finale to what could have been an extremely exciting tale, but at the the end, we were defeated. If you enjoyed this extra long episode of the Sea of Tales, do make sure to check out our sponsor Gamer Advantage, because without their support, I could not justify spending all this time recording and editing such a massive project. But if it's another tale you're looking for, what about you check out my episode on the ultimate heist? In that episode, I'm the one playing the traitor, and I'm sure you're gonna get a kick out of it. You can find a code on screen right now. But until then, thank you everybody so much for watching, I hope you guys have a day filled with riches on the sea, and until next time, peace.